In this video, we are going to discuss about various data types in Java. Now the first question arises is, what is a data type? A data type is nothing but an attribute of variables. And this particular attribute of variables, which tells the compiler or the interpreter how the programmer intends to the use of variable, that how that particular variable can be used. In several programs, you might have seen that int a, boolean b, char c. Now this particular int, boolean, char are the attributes of the variable a, b and c. Hence, this particular int, boolean and char are the data types. Now it defines the operation that you can be done on the data and what type of value can actually be stored. For example, in this particular a variable, I can store the value such as 1, 2, 3, 45, etc. But can I store a value in this particular a as capital A? No. That for that, I have to use the char variable or the char data type. So it also tells or defines the operation that can be done on any particular data and what types of value can be stored. According to the properties they possess, data types are actually classified into two groups. The first is primitive data type and the second is non-primitive data type. So these are the two classification in which data types are classified in Java according to the properties which they possess. So firstly, the primitive data types. Primitive data type is a predefined by the programming language. The size and the type of variable values are specified and it has no additional method. That means they are already being declared or already predefined in the language. We have to not use any particular assignment for those or any type of values to be passed we have to specify. It is already known by the compiler. They are by default there in the system or predefined by the programming language. Those data types are primitive. Now, non-primitive data type are actually the data types which are not defined by the programming language. Who creates this particular data types? The programmers. Programmer create these data types according to their needs and they are also called reference variable or object references since there is a reference of memory location which stores the particular data. So they are also known as the reference variables. It is created by the programmer and the primitive data types are already created or predefined by the programming languages. Now firstly discuss in brief about the primitive data type. So the primitive data types in Java are classified into four aspects are broadly classified into four things that is int, float, character and boolean. This is the broad classification in the four aspects that is int, float, character and boolean. But in general there are eight data types in Java. Apart from this broad classification the eight data types can have byte care, short, long and of course we are including int, float, character, boolean. So this is the eight types which are classified in the primitive data types of Java. These are actually classified with the primitive data types in Java. Now we will let you understand about this with the help of a flowchart. So we are going to discuss in a flow chart about the primitive data types in Java. So we know that the broad classification of the four data types already which we have studied is that int, float, char and boolean and rest are included in that, the other data types. So firstly what we have is integer. So this integer data type is further having byte and the size is 1. Next it is having long. Now this long integer is actually having 8 bytes. Short, it is having the size as 2 bytes. And lastly, the int integer, the size of integer in Java is 4 bytes. And how do we actually initialize any particular integer? We have seen in many programs also that int let's say x is equals to 12 
So this is how you can use to initialize any particular number of variable having integer as its data type, the attribute of the variable x. After integer, we have float for the decimal values. Float firstly is having size of 4 bytes and if it is double, then it is having size as 8 bytes. And how do we declare a float number? Very simple float let's say x equals to 12.86 this is how a float number or any float particular integer can be declared next what we have discussed about character so this character is actually having two bytes in java and how can we declare that char let's say for the x variable and we are declaring the character a here this is how it can be done and the last which is left is boolean and the boolean data type which is a primitive data type is actually having for initialization we use bool and it is having one byte now but it makes use of one bit of particularly of it how can we initialize it we can initialize it like boolean b equals to True. We know that boolean either generates true value or that generates false value. So this is how we can initialize that particular variable. Now we will discuss about each data type in detail. So firstly we will discuss about the boolean data type and boolean is a data type that comprises of bit information and it can only store either true or false as its values. Now this data type is used to track the condition which we have also used in conditional statements and in many looping statements it can be used. Now how can we do that just a basic program I am making here and you can implement it in your IDE that for example firstly we have created a class naming a I am not going into that detail I am just showing you how to initialize it. For example I have initialized boolean a the variable as true. And I have initialized another variable also boolean b and value as false. Now when I call this with the help of SOP statement that system.outprintln statement and I call the variable a then it is going to print the value true. True is printed and in the SOP statement if I ask for the value b then it will print as false. So this is a very basic implementation of boolean and this is all about the boolean data type. Next we are going to shift with byte that what does this byte do the byte data type. It is also an example of the primitive data type. It is the 8 bit sign 2's complement integer. What kind of integer it is 8 bit signed 2's complement integer. That means it stores the value of the whole number that lies between minus 128 to 127. Now a byte data type is helpful for saving the memory in large amounts. For example, here we can also say that we have initialized two variables of byte data type as n and a. And the value of n which I have given is 178 and the value of a I give as 127. So when I print this particular value of n, it will show me error. Why? Because the byte data type cannot store the value above 127 and I have given the value as 178. So this is basically showing the range of the program in the SOP statement if you give as system.outprintln and you print the value of n. This particular value will not get printed. Why? Because this particular value is exceeding the range of the byte data type. So this is a very small implementation of byte data type. Next we will move to char. So the char data type is nothing but it is used to store single character. For storage of single character we use the char data type and the character must be enclosed in the quotes that is single or double whichever and alternatively you can use the ASCII value to display certain character that means you can give the ASCII value we know that capital A has a different ASCII value and capital B also for example we can say that the 65 uh, it will display as the value of any particular 
alphabet or any particular character whichever you are giving for small a or the capital a so how can we do that for example care and i'm initializing here has 65 so there will be no issues because this particularly is an ascii value of any particular character also and then it is going to print that particular value that whichever care it is actually so in the system dot out print ln if you give this particular that print a so it will print the value 65 that is in ASCII or as it can print any particular value also for example in which you are initializing it like char c and it is having any kind of value such as you can say j and when you are you're giving in the SOP statement that print c then it will print the value which is having so it will print j so this is about char data type next we are going to discuss about short data type so the short data type and this is a type greater than the bytes in terms of the size because it stores the value from minus 128 to 127 but the range is very large of the short that it it stores the value from minus 32768 to 32767 this is a very large lane and the default size of this data type which we have discussed is two bytes which we discussed already when we did the flow chart now for example if you want to print the values that for example this is how you can declare a value short n and you can give the value this is a very large range so you can give any value let's say if you are giving this particular value so it will print that value because yes the range is not exceeding so it will print that particular value now integer integer as we all know we have studied in so many programs also it can store whole number for a large range of values and generally int preferred data type when you create the variables of numeric we generally use int while we create the variables so this is the integer which we generally use for creation of values and how can we do that int any particular value which we want to give and then suppose i am giving this particular value and with the help of system dot out print ln statement i am printing this value and it gets print so this is about integer now we have also studied about long the long data type is a 64 bit twos complement integer and the 64 bit twos complement integer by default the size is 64 bit and the range of values is minus 2 to power 63 to 2 to power 63 minus 1 this is a range so it can store very big values and it is also sometimes called as long int also so what you have to do is nothing for initialize such values you can give just long num and give any range of values and print it with the help of system dot out print ln. so this is about the long data type next we have also discussed about the floating now floating point are those particular data types which in which a number and a decimal is there that means there is an integer part also and there is a decimal part for example 12.21 so this is actually a float so this is about float and how can we declare this particular value very easy just as we did for others float x is equals to 12.21 and then with the help of system dot out print ln statement you can print this particular value of x for example if you do like this float x and you just give the value 12 and then print this following then this value will not get printed it will generate an error because this is not a floating number it prints the floating values only in the system so you have to generate or you have to give the floating values of particular integer and it will print the floating numbers so we are done with the primitive data types and next we have non-primitive now non-primitive as the name suggests in which they are not usually defined by the programming language user can define it according to their own reference and as it refers to the object hence they are also called a reference type also now non-primitive data type it in string array class also interface now these are the four types which includes or compi comprises of the non-primitive data type strings are actually the sequence of characters only that characters included in any particular sequence can be termed as string for that we also have the java dot lang dot string class 
which we import while doing any program and for more about strings we will discuss in our upcoming videos arrays arrays also store actually homogeneous data structure implemented in java as an object arrays can store one or more value of a specific data type and in the indexed form for example if you are initializing a particular array so this is particularly an integer type of array also this can be termed as an array also and this is a string type of array so we will discuss in detail about in java arrays class is also we know as a blueprint of object which includes all your data it contains several objects methods so hence class can also be termed as a non primitive data type because it also includes all the object similar to class there is interface like a class interface can also have methods and variables but the methods declared in a interface are default or abstract so this is all the sum up about the non primitive data types and we will discuss about this in our upcoming videos